Hello and welcome to a very gloomy, rainy day here in Chicago. And it's actually kind of nice. It hasn't been rainy in quite some time. And I also am trying to soak up the rain because I'm officially moving to Los Angeles. I got the place. I'm so excited. It's this cute little bungalow. It's my own home, my own little house located in the Los Feliz, Silver Lake, Echo Park area, you know, the artsy area, um, but also where all of my friends live. So I'm very excited. I'm moving out at the beginning of December, and that means home decorating content, which I'm super excited to create because I haven't really made that type of content. I've only really been doing sit downs, which I will still do, but I'm excited to film my process of decorating my new little Spanish style home. Now for today, today's lesson in Paige Wassel's thoughts on interior design, I thought it would be fun to go through brand collaborations. Basically, every single brand ever is doing collaborations. I honestly like it. I think it's fun that brands collaborate with cool artists or maybe people that you normally wouldn't get, you know, homeware from, or I don't know, maybe it's a more expensive artist or designer that brings you something more affordable through, you know, companies like CB2. Um, so I'm not judging these home brand collaborations, but I will be reviewing some of them today. And as I did my research, there are so many collabs that I had no idea even existed. So I'm excited to take a look at which ones are good, which ones are bad, some mediocre ones, and yeah, basically give you my opinions and my review on home brand collaborations. I feel like CB2 is kind of the starter to these home collaborations. I just remember them having collaborations with people years ago, and I don't feel like as many people were doing them. And now today, pretty much everyone, sometimes I'm like, this is the most random collaboration, but in home decor, it seems like most of them make sense. But CB2 is definitely kind of where it started. They even have a page called Collaborations where you can see all of the collabs they have done. And you know, I thought we would start off with the Goop slash CB2 collab. And as you can tell, the Goop collab is very girly. And I wouldn't say if I saw this out of, you know, a catalog that I would be like, oh, this is, you know, Goop designs. It's actually very much so CB2 with a very feminine touch, which I think is nice. Let's shop the collection. But I wouldn't say any of this stuff is particularly interesting to me. And I doubt a lot of this sold, to be honest. I mean, maybe it did. I don't know. But like this chair for $1,000 with that color is pretty bad. So I wouldn't say the Goop Club is something I was really paying attention to. Now, I bet a lot of you don't know who Kara Mann is, but Kara Mann is a interior designer based in Chicago. So I do think it's cool that they collaborated with her because CB2, Crate and Barrel all started in Chicago. It's based here. And I do think Kara Mann has cool style. I remember when this came out, I did find it pretty interesting. Like this lamp was pretty cool. I feel like her stuff feels a lot more high-end than the Goop collab. She has this sofa that has a bed skirt kind of ruffle at the bottom. And when I saw that, I was like, this is really cool, but is this a piece that I would really want in the future? So I do like her collaboration. I think it's sleek and it's modern and it's a lot of black and white, which I think she is known for, but like this dresser feels really timeless and unique. And, you know, I've never really seen CB2 produce something like this before. So I will say I'm into it. I also really love this lamp, the scrunch table lamp. I think I've shown it in previous videos, but I never bought it. But I like the idea of this like all fabric lamp. I think it's all fabric, but 
into that as well. Otherwise, it's just a lot of black and white. And I also just think people might not know who Caraman is. Lenny Kravitz, pretty random to do a collaboration with him. Maybe he's really into interiors and I just don't know. His style is very different than the average consumer at CB2, but I do think it's unique and different than what CB2 sells compared to Goop, where it was like, this just looks like a CB2 line, whereas Lenny Kravitz's, you can definitely tell that this was a collaboration, which I think is important. If you're gonna do a collab, you might as well have it stand out from the rest of their pieces. Am I obsessed with this sofa? I don't think so. I'm not the biggest fan of a color palette of orange and black and yellow, but I do feel like there's an audience out there for it. So I think it's pretty cool that they did a collaboration with him, um, but did I buy anything? No, but I guess I haven't bought anything from any of these CB2 collabs. I was shocked when I saw Lawson Fenning did a collaboration with CB2 because they are a very high-end interior design store in Los Angeles, like very high-end, very expensive. So I think it's pretty cool that they, you know, decided to offer some affordable pieces. But I was shocked at how ununique it was because if you go into the Lawson Fenning store, it just screams really cool interior design to me. Whereas if you look at this pillow right here, it almost looks like it could be sold at West Elm. I like their use of wood, like in this oak side table. It's like this chair just looks like the goop chair. Um, and then this is just a little incense burner that looks like a bird. So I don't know, I guess I just thought if you're going to do a collaboration, I want to go to it and be wowed or at least just impressed and maybe with Cara Man. I don't know if any of these are really staring out to me. I don't know what Art Patron is, um, but let's check out their collab because maybe, maybe I'm going to like it. Oh, okay. I guess it's just really cool art. And I do like a lot of this art. So it's still pretty expensive though, but probably way cheaper than the originals. Wow, this one's cool. This is cool. I think it's kind of cool that they did a collaboration with an artist. This one's sweet too. I actually like a lot of these. Wow. All right, let's move on. CB2 is, yes, the starter of collabs, but now let's move on to the second starter of collabs, which is anthropology. I think the most important one that we are going to touch base on is the Matilda Goad anthropology collaboration. <laughs> As you all know, I've done a video on Matilda Goad on how I like her style, but okay, here's where I'm at thought wise. Anthropology has really just gone downhill in my, in my books, in my opinion, whereas I feel like CB2 always has like new things that I'm impressed by, but anthropology, I don't know, something about them makes, I don't know, they, they, they aren't catching my eye lately. So when Matilda Go did a partnership with them, I was like, this actually makes sense. Their styles are very similar, but I don't want to picture Matilda Goad as an anthropology style because it almost made me like her style less. But, you know, her collection still is really pretty. I think she has a lot of unique pieces. So I think it's just cool that you can shop from it. Like this chair is pretty fun. Matilda Goad does have her own home line, I believe. So it is kind of nice, I guess, that you can get it at a more affordable price at Anthro. Like this lamp is very much her style. I think a lot of her glassware is cool. There's a lot of color. A lot of this feels very Matilda Goad. Ooh, I think this, this knit blanket is really fun. Oh, I do like that. Kind of looks like a towel at the same time. If anything, I feel like this collaboration does feel very much her. I think she was very much so involved in it. Like these glasses are really cool. So I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm prejudging anthropology. Should I give them another chance? Oh, I don't really like this mirror though. Out of all the fabrics. All right, moving on. Anthropology also did a collaboration with House of Hackney, which I believe is a London-based interior design firm. I actually stayed in Hackney when I was out in London. And listen, I'm looking at their stuff and I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a fan. What is going on? This is just dark wallpaper. Hackney. Oh, it's paint colors. Okay. 
I don't know. This isn't my vibe whatsoever. It feels very almost Jungle-O, Target X Jungle-O. Speaking of Jungle-O, Target did a collaboration with Jungle-O and I'm not even really gonna dig deep into the Target collabs because I feel like they stay in Target forever. Like Magnolia Home is basically Target interiors at this point. And same with Studio McGee at Target. Like they never leave. They're not even collabs anymore. Basically is Target style. And I do feel like Jungle is basically like their Opal House brand. And I will say I'm just not a huge fan of this style, but I do feel like a lot of people like it. I just, I don't know. I can't get around this color palette. I can't get around a lot of their pieces. I think, to be honest with you, I do think Studio McGee is probably my favorite collaboration that Target has done. I don't know. Magnolia has some pieces too. Like if you go into Target, you most likely will find something you like. But I will say I think Junglo is definitely my least favorite. Amber Interiors is a huge design firm based in Los Angeles. She started this a long time ago. Now they are so incredibly popular. I think to even get them as a client to design your home, I think you have to wait like years. But now she has a store and she has like a home line. I give Amber the credit to this type of style, this, you know, Magnolia, Studio McGee. It is Amber Interiors at the beginning, in in my opinion. And she also did a collaboration with Anthropology. I think this was a while ago. So I feel like now it might be a little bit more updated if she were to come out with products, but it feels very general and, you know, it, it honestly just feels like Studio McGee. So I think this came out a, a bit ago, but, you know, her style was really cool. I would say in like 2015 was when this was like really blowing up. But now I would say it's actually just so overdone that I'm very sick of it. So I am curious to see how they evolve. If you follow their Instagram, I do feel like they've been like upgrading their stuff. It's just very like California, very California style. I'm a huge fan of Design Within Reach. I'm a huge fan of Herman Miller. I really like Noel. And I feel like Hay is kind of like a younger version of, of those types of brands. And recently they came out with a collaboration with Layla Gohar. And I think her name is Layla Cooks on Instagram. And I've been following her for quite some time because she has really cool photos on her Instagram where she like prop styles these food images that are just kind of odd looking, but I really like them. And she came out with a collaboration with Hay, and I think that's so fun that they decided to partner with her because she, is, it's just different. It's like a smaller artist. I think she's a chef and I really like her collection. I think it's really fun. I actually really love these dishware pieces, the sombre, sombre mesa serving bowl. I really like like all these like little outlines, but again, it's a very like Danish style almost. And I just think she has such unique taste. I probably would own pretty much anything in her collection. I just think it's fun and unique and she just has such unique style. So I think it's cool that they found her to collab with. And Herman Miller also did a collaboration with Hay, which is amazing. It's expensive still. You would think maybe we could get a little discount, but, but check out this sofa. I think this is such a cool sofa. I mean, it's like six grand and it wouldn't even be your actual sofa because it doesn't really work like that. But this collaboration I think is really fun. And basically they're just giving, you know, other versions of their Eames chairs and just fun pops of color. Like this chair is super cool. And you know, the general Nelson pendants. And I just think that Herman Miller can do no wrong. And I'm a huge fan of hay. I wouldn't say my whole style is hay, but I like to incorporate pieces that they produce. I swoon, Athena Cauldron for Crate and Barrel. Now listen, I didn't actually know who this was. And I think she's a pretty big influencer. Um, I would assume if they're collaborating with her. Unpopular opinion, I'm not a big fan of this type of style. I just don't love like a coffee table that looks like a stone. Like this is all just very earthy. It's all very like lime wash feeling. It feels very Colin King. Colin King is actually a prop stylist like me, but he's, you know, been in the business for a while. And he just did 
a collaboration with this company called Menu. And it's cool. He has cool stuff. But this type of style just isn't for me. It's the same as the Eye Swoon or the Athena for Crate and Barrel. It's just very like earthy. And I like it. I like pieces from it. But I wouldn't say this is fully my style. I think that this dining table is really cool. Oh, this like red marble thing is super sweet. And I think a lot of the dishware is fine. But I don't know. This doesn't like draw me in. I'm not like, wow, this is so different. It just feels all the same. It all feels amber interiors. It feels Magnolia Home, Studio McGee. Now we have Athena. It's all within the same realm of design, which is this like earthy California with like touches of farmhouse. And I think, you know, people are stepping out of the box and getting a little bit more high end. Like this candlestick is actually pretty sweet, I would say. Oh, it's that's actually really cool. Uh, because it sits on the, should I buy that? That's cool. But, you know, all of this looks, you know, I've seen it all before. This couch is kind of cool too. I don't know. These collabs are getting better, but it just feels all like the same style. Like I've seen this type of bowl and vase and this type of texture over and over and over again. And it's not really my thing. Even though now I want to buy that, that candlestick. Wayfair did a collaboration with Kelly Clarkson. Now, here is where I get a little confused. Taking just a large name and slapping it on a furniture collection, I don't know, it's fine. It just feels a little inauthentic. Like why does Kelly Clarkson get to design furniture? Or why would you trust a line by Kelly Clarkson? I guess, you know, it brings people into Wayfair. They probably paid her a lot of money. But, you know, I'm on the site now. I wouldn't say any of this is good. I, I honestly feel like this just looks like general Wayfair stuff. And this is actually pretty horrendous. That is insane. I feel like Kelly Clarkson wouldn't have signed off on that. But maybe she did. I really feel like these are the types of collabs where the celebrity just like isn't really involved. And we're just buying it because we think Kelly Clarkson likes this stuff, but I don't know. This whole, this is, I can't get over this. Pretty odd. And speaking of just general celebrity collaborations, Selena Gomez did a collaboration with Our Place, which is a brand of like tableware and cookware. And again, you know, maybe she was involved, but why? It's just like slapping, you know, a celebrity on an endorsement at this point, you know, like Jennifer Aniston for Smart Water. It's just the face. And then they just pretend that they collabed. And maybe Selena did, because I do feel like Selena is that type of gal that would be involved. And same with Kelly Clarkson, I guess. They're picking good celebrities, but... Yeah, I mean, am I going to buy anything from this collection? Do I want a pink pot? Do I want a blue pot? No. I think, again, it's just the name on the brand. Whereas, like, Layla cooks for Hay. She's a chef. She uses homeware products. She has amazing style. I think they, like, really sought her out as, like, a tastemaker. And, you know, I just think some celebrities are, like, all over the place. Like, Selena has you know, makeup, she does film, she does sing. I mean, maybe to me, this just feels like we're going to put Selena's face on this so people buy it. You know, West Elm isn't as intense about the collaborations. They did one with Eileen Fisher. I'm a huge fan of Eileen Fisher. I wouldn't say I love this collab. I also don't feel like we even heard about it. I don't feel like we've heard about any of these collaborations. Like, I feel like CB2 is the only one that really goes crazy with advertising them, or maybe just because they're kind of a new thing, we aren't hearing about it as mainstream. I don't know. I never heard about this, but people don't really know who Eileen Fisher is. I do like her. West Elm also did a collaboration with Mara Hoffman. Mara Hoffman's a swimsuit designer, and she has interesting style that actually would fit really well with West Elm. She uses a lot of like squiggle patterns, 
And I guess this is pretty much all that's available. It does confuse me a little bit that she didn't use any color because West Elm does love color. And Mara Hoffman's bathing suits are usually very colorful. So I don't know. This is like whatever. Like I guess – I guess some of this is cool. I'm not wowed, so we will be moving on. It's funny to me when these like franchises or like these huge companies or these no names do collaborations. It's just random. Like Barbie is everywhere. Barbie has a collaboration with Backdrop, which is a paint company, which I actually do think is a cool company because they have good paint colors. But they did a collab with Barbie and they just came out with, you know, a blue, a purple and a pink. And I do not like any of them. Very random collab. Barbie also did a collaboration with Wall Shop, which is a wallpaper company. And again, very Barbie. What is this? 695. This is a piece of art. OK, I guess you can get this piece of Barbie art for almost $700. And I guess this is some of the Barbie wallpaper and it's grass cloth, so not very affordable. $395 for a roll. Okay, kind of random. They have like all these like random products and very expensive art. I'm not gonna say I would buy anything from this, but I'm sure people who love to collect Barbie stuff would like this collab, kind of random. These pillows are kind of cute, like the vintage Barbies. Could be cute in like a kid's room. I guess wall shop is more than just wallpaper. They must sell art too. I just didn't, I didn't know. I guess this is pretty cool. The pillows like, oh wait, now these, are these Barbie? Pillow, pillow by Barbie. These don't really feel very Barbie. But it's like, what even is this? Like who, who are they even working with to... What is this? This is still by Barbie. Hmm. Okay. And then Barbie also did a collaboration with Joybird recently. And we're going to take a look at this collab. And again, very random that Barbie's collaborating on these things. I wonder, I just wonder why. It really doesn't make much sense to me. But, you know, everyone's doing it. Look at Ruggable. Ruggable are washable rugs. So they are like thin and then you can throw them in the wash. And they have really gone crazy with some fun collabs like Marvel times Ruggable, which I actually think is kind of smart because I feel like a lot of kids would have Ruggables in their room because you can wash them and kids are dirty. So yes, Ruggable has a collection with Marvel. They also have a collection with Star Wars. And you know what? I feel like this is pretty on brand for them because their rugs, oh, but they're entry mats. I don't know. It doesn't feel to me like Ruggable is trying to be this like very stylish rug company. Yes, they have really cool styled rugs, but they're also just trying to aim their product towards anyone. So why not do a Star Wars collection because I honestly feel like people who like Star Wars would also like Ruggable, you know, like they want like a nice washable rug in their game room. But then Ruggable pulls something out of their ass like Ruggable times Keith Herring, which is that how you say Keith Herring or Keith Hart Herring, which is actually a pretty cool and smart collaboration because people love his designs and I think the fun thing about Ruggable is that they're pretty affordable. So, you know, you could throw in one of these rugs and then if you're sick of it, you still have the pad that goes under it and you could replace it uh, later on with a Star Wars rug if you get sick, if you get sick of your Keith Herring. But people, people do like this artist and I think it's kind of cool that you can get a rug by him. I think it kind of works in a weird way. The entry mats are actually kind of fun. Like this guy, the Daisy doormat. Jonathan Adler is kind of everywhere. You can buy his stuff on Amazon. I feel like he's one of those designers that has just been around forever. He also did a collaboration with Ruggable. And I feel like people would love this because people are huge fans of Jonathan Adler. Like he has a very modern, like luxe style and he loves a tiger 
And I think that's kind of cool that they collaborated with him. How many times do you think I've said collab in this video? And speaking of Jonathan Adler, he also did a collaboration with Keurig, um, which is just also very random, but I kind of like when brands do this. Like who is the brand that did Dolce and Gabbana coffee? Oh, Smeg. Smeg also did a collab with Dolce and Cabana and people loved, loved that. I kind of, I do kind of weirdly like, like a product coming out with like a fun design. So this is like not my favorite, the Keurig, but I like the concept. Pottery Barn did a collaboration with the BADG, the Black Artists and Designers Guild. And it's a line that celebrates Black joy, which I think is just cool. Like Pottery Barn is really doing a good job at stepping out of their box in a really meaningful way. They have their line for people with disabilities and now they have this line, which I think is pretty cool. I like this collaboration because it introduces a lot of bright colors to Pottery Barn and I just think it's a cool concept and I think a lot of people would be interested in buying stuff from this line. They also randomly did a collaboration with Airstream. I remember seeing this on Instagram and I was like, what, why is Airstream doing a collaboration with Pottery Barn? But I guess like people love a little Airstream moment. I don't really know. I don't really know what this means, but here's a Airstream ice bucket. Pretty random. I feel like Pottery Barn is going to come out with more collab. Everyone's going to be going crazy on these collaborations. And honestly, I'm here for it. But I'm here more for the ones that are bringing cool, like smaller artists out than, you know, just slapping a big name on a collection that maybe they had nothing to do with. It's always fun when Walmart comes out with a collab because you know it's the most affordable collaboration. Like when you go to CB2 and Anthro and stuff, like you're like, okay, this is still gonna be expensive. But if Walmart comes out with a collection, I'm like, let me actually check this out. Like they did one with Queer Eye, which I think is so cool that they did a collaboration with them. I didn't even know they did until I was researching this project. And they have a lot of beds and sofas. You can shop by rooms. I think that a lot of this looks really upgraded for Walmart. I think Walmart could do even more collaborations with really cool designers. I think a really cool designer could go crazy with Walmart home decor. I mean, Queer Eye, they have cool stuff like this bed. I feel like you can find cool stuff at Walmart, but it's when they do these fun collaborations that you can really find something unique. So I am excited to see what else they could come out with. Like if they're doing a collab with Queer Eye, like, look, like this is fun, this little um, olive green thing. I don't know. I feel like Walmart's gonna be the one I'm gonna keep my closest eye on of who they collab with next. I actually had no idea that they did a collaboration with Gap. That's so fun. I love Gap. I personally like to shop at Gap. The fact that they did a collab with Walmart is actually pretty cool because I feel like I would trust anything that Gap really does. Cause usually it's just simple and classic and like all American. And I don't know, I'm, I, I weirdly like Gap stuff. Obviously, you got to pick and choose, but just looking on their website on Walmart, like even just this rug, I feel like it's like really upgrading Walmart style. Like that's a cool rug for like, yeah, a kid room or somewhere. I'm going to have to browse through this Gap Club more. I had no idea. The Home Edit, which is this two women organizational team. I feel like they started on YouTube. They've done a few collaborations, which I really like. They did one with Walmart, which is, you know, all these like nice acrylic things to organize your house with. And then they also did a collaboration with the container store. I love the container store, but they're expensive. So I feel like their collab with the container store is probably just quite similar to the one that they did with Walmart. But in the end, I'm here for whatever they have to offer the table. But yeah, like, look, you can buy pretty much the same stuff at Walmart. So 
Make sure to check out Walmart before the container store, even though I do like the container store, but Walmart is my fave. Living Spaces also came out with a collaboration with the Property Brothers, Drew and Jonathan. I don't, I don't watch their stuff, but I don't really shop at Living Spaces. I feel like I would go there for like outdoor furniture, but they feel like kind of like an all modern or a Wayfair, but it kind of cool that they did a collection with the Property Brothers because I feel like people love the Property Brothers. And you know, while I look at their stuff, it feels very just simple and sleek. I actually really despise this sofa though, like a white leather, I don't know. Aren't they just real estate guys? Like, does that qualify them to make us cool furniture? I don't know. I feel like now that these collaborations are kind of taking off, like everyone is doing a collaboration now, like even Jenny Kane, who's a really cool California like clothing designer, did a collaboration with Staub. It honestly looks pretty much the same as like any Staub thing, but everyone's going crazy on collabs. Every, you know, clothing brand, like Boohoo times Kourtney Kardashian, literally everyone. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I actually like it, but I am excited to see how far they take it because I think we could get some really cool stuff out of these collabs if they do it right. Like I don't, I don't need, you know, these giant popular celebrities. Like I even know Kim Kardashian came out with these bathroom products, which you basically could just get at Bed Bath & Beyond. So I'm curious to see like some of the cool people that these big companies start collaborating with, especially what Walmart does. Cause I feel like Walmart just has all of the power in the world. And is Amazon home going to do anything? We don't know, but I am interested and I will be following. And I do overall like home brand collabs. I just wouldn't say there's one out there that I've been like, wow, except Layla Cooks for Hay. I think that was a pretty cool one. But yeah, these are my thoughts on home brand collabs or the ones that are out right now. And hopefully you like this video and I will see you all next week. No, I'll see you all on Sunday. I'm trying to post twice a week, but we will see because I'm very busy with my move. Oh, and my very exciting little project is going to be announced pretty soon, um, which kind of has something to do with a collab, but not, not what you're thinking. So stay tuned and I'll see you on Sunday. Goodbye. <laughs>